how do you define literature? Like what, what in your mind defines the medium of literature? It is, it's hard to define. It's hard to give a quick definition. I mean, there are quick definitions out there, one sentence ones, but one of the things I would say is that I personally make fewer distinctions among the various storytelling methods than a lot of academic people might. So mm -hmm. I see the value of these other ones. So I, I, I agree with what you're saying is literature is one of these. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, what we consider quote unquote literature is um, it, it, it can do things that, that TikTok can't do, but TikTok mm -hmm. can do things that uh, Milton's Paradise Lost can't do or Shakespeare can't do. So I respect all, all of those. I think that when we talk about literature, when I talk about it in my courses, one of the issues that we help, that we use to help define it is the, what we call the canon of literature, C-A-N-O-N, that which is those works that a culture considers great and worthy of study. Mm. So that might be a kind of definition of literature so that there are, of all the millions of books, let's say that you can buy on Amazon, there's a canon, a select group that we as a culture, and it depends on what culture you mean, you know, American culture, academic culture that have risen to the top or that we have decided informally, there's no official canon of mm -hmm. literature, but, but we have decided these works are so good. We need to teach them. We need to write about them. We need to keep performing them. So Shakespeare is in there and Milton and, and Faulkner and Mark Twain and these writers, and there's something about them that is important. And the important mm -hmm. thing about them, often it has to do with artistic beauty. So they're doing just something that can amaze us if we dig deeply into it. Often it's also, there's a universal element to the great writers' works so that it says something universal about the human condition. Also, it may say something important about that particular time period in which it was written, and we mm -hmm. want to hold on to that. So a lot of people have read The Great Gatsby. Mm -hmm. It represents the jazz age in America as one example. So we hold on to it for that reason. So that's what I would say in a brief form about how I would define literature. It's not a definition exactly, but it's at least the realm I think that we're talking about when we, when we say literature. Does it now, does it have to be as you, as we differentiate it from other mediums, does it have to be prose or could it be like, does the poetry, does like the Milton, does that fit in the realm of literature as well? Yes. Yes. Pretty much. If you, what the way, the uh, shorthand way of thinking of it, which is not a complete way, but it is helpful. If you think of a literature anthology, like mm -hmm. the Norton Anthology of American Literature, which I've taught from my whole career in my American Lit courses, will include poetry, fiction, drama, and some nonfiction. Mm -hmm. But okay. yes. And so, and there are problems with the literary canon. Uh, and I don't know if we, if you even want to get into that, but <laughs> I'll just mention it. one problem is that there, there are biases in it. Sure. So in fiction, for example, there's, there's some bias against certain genres. So mm -hmm. you don't see any mystery novels end up in, in mm -hmm. what we consider the canon. You don't see very many spy novels. I love to read spy novels, but there are very few in the canon. There, science fiction, fantasy, there's some of that in the canon, but it's not as much as realistic fiction. So there, there are problems with these things, but it's also useful because in a literature course, students on their own 
will read things or be exposed to things that they don't need a course to introduce them to. Hmm. Some of the great literature they would not experience without a course to guide them into it.